Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Denise Maltz, and I'm with the Westlake Financial Wellbeing Center. And you are here with Career Source, and they're going to talk to you about a lot of their programs, and one of them is Help Is Here. We, before I turn it over to them, however, I want to give you some housekeeping information. The first thing is that everyone is currently muted, your videos turned off, and the webinar will be recorded. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature and not the chat. The Q&A feature helps us keep your, keep your questions and allows us to make sure that we answer all the questions that sent to us. The chat is rolling, so there might be questions that we miss. So please use the Q&A feature. Once the guest speakers are finished, there will be a post-test. So what you took when you first registered was a pre-test. We appreciate you answering those questions. Our two wonderful young ladies from Career Source will give you all of the answers to those questions, plus a lot more. And if you could answer the post-test, there will be a link. All you have to do is click on that link put your full name in the post test, answer the questions, and then hit submit. And the only difference between the pre and post is that you will now know the answers because the young ladies will make sure you know them. And then we will have a raffle drawing at the end of the webinar. So please, as soon as the ladies finish speaking, don't leave me. Please do the post test. And then we, once we get your post test, we will put your name in the drawing and we will raffle off gift cards for you guys. So please, we want to give away the gift cards. So please don't, and they will be Eve gift cards. So we want to make sure we give that away to you guys. So please submit the post test so that we can do that. And then just want to let everyone know that we collect and maintain your registration information. We don't sell it. We don't share it. We don't give it anywhere. We just provide that information to communicate with you about future webinars. So that's what we do with your registration information. And of course, the post test is just the information um, for the, I'm sorry, the, the registration has the pre-test information as well. So again, I'm putting a link in the post-test after the young ladies finish. Please just click on that link, put your full name in the post-test, answer the questions and just hit submit. And then we can have that raffle drawing. So please don't leave me until you um, finish the, until we finish the raffle. If you have any questions as we go along, again, put your questions in the Q&A feature. We appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you for your time. And again, my name is Denise Smalls and I am with the Financial Wellbeing Center and we're just the hosts. But now I'm going to turn it over to the young ladies who have all of the answers about careers. And so I am going to turn that over to Kenya and to Jeanette from Career Source. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Denise. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen with you guys so you can see the presentation. Again, I do want to welcome you to uh, Career Source Central Florida's Virtual Learning Center. Again, my name is Kenya Pittman, and I'll be one of your hosts for today's presentation. Um, we're going to talk about a variety of things, but the main things going to focus on is going to be the Help Us Here program, but we're also going to give you information about Career Source and how you can utilize us as a resource. So again, thank you all for joining us this evening. Denise introduced herself, and I'm going to introduce myself as well as Jeanette Hess. We are both um, DEO learning liaisons with Career Source Central Florida. Um, myself, I've been working in workforce development for over 13 years. I've worked in different capacities. I've worked as a TANF case manager. I've worked um, as a career consultant, um, I've worked as a workshop facilitator, and now as a DEO learning liaison. Um, 
Jeanette and I facilitate um, in person for Career Source Central Florida, but due to COVID back in March, we did have to kind of pivot and now we offer these services virtually and we are happy that we're able to provide this service to you this evening as well. Um, I'm definitely passionate about my job. One of the things that I love is being able to um, help people identify their career goals and, um, you know, develop a career strategy and, you know, live their full potential. So, um, Jeanette, I'm going to uh, allow you to unmute yourself and come on and talk a little bit about yourself and your qualifications. Okay, thank you very much, Kenya, and good okay. evening, everybody. Um, like Kenya stated, my name is Janet Hess. I also work for the Department of Economic Opportunity as a learning liaison. I started working with the department in 2002, um, going on my 19th year. Um, first 14 years of my time with the department was spent in the Reemployment Assistance uh, Division. I would say after that length of time, I, I pretty much um, consider myself to be a subject matter expert with all things reemployment in the state of Florida. Uh, October of 2015, I was just looking for a new challenge and decided to come over onto the workforce side of career, uh, of the department through career source. So I am uh, currently um, assigned to the location here in Seminole County. Um, I, along with my partner Kenya, enjoy uh, creating content uh, to present to our customers and facilitating workshops, um, going out to different employers and speaking with them and just partnering with a lot of our um, partners out in, out in the uh, five counties that we serve and just bringing useful resources and information to our customers. So welcome and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jeanette. And Jeanette is going to be, uh, while I'm presenting, she's going to be man in the chat feature. Um, and while uh, she's presenting, I'll be uh, doing the same. We are using a Zoom platform uh, this evening, which has really great features. It does help us have an interactive webinar. Right now, as Denise he said everyone is muted except, of course, our speakers. So if you do have a question, uh, go ahead and shoot that question to the Q&A feature and the chat feature within Zoom. You can give us a thumbs up, a thumbs down. You can even let us know if we're going too fast or too slow. And I know sometimes we have connection issues. So if that does occur, please let us know within that chat feature so we can ensure that everyone is able to communicate over the course of today's presentation because we do have some really good uh, information for you guys about the Help Us Here program as well as Career Source Central Florida. And to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So we're going to practice using that chat feature right now. So uh, again, just to make sure everyone is able to hear us. So if you don't mind, let us know within that chat. Uh, you can send us a message, something, you know, simple as a hi, a good evening, just to let us know that you are out there and you can hear us in this virtual space. Uh, typically, we do rely on uh, individuals in that face-to-face -face situation. We rely on their facial expressions to, you know, identify whether or not, you know, you guys are following along or that you hear us and understand us. So uh, we're going to, you know, we have to kind of do what we have to do with this virtual space. And again, we want to make sure that everyone is on board and they're able to hear us. So again, thank you all. She has said good evening, Chantel. Hello. Thank you all for joining us. And again, thank you so much for locating that particular uh, chat feature because, again, we do want to make sure that we're um, engaging and that we are, um, you know, interactive over the course of today's presentation. I talk to you guys next about our agenda and what we're going to cover for today's presentation. We're going to give an overview of Career Source Central Florida, uh, the services that we offer. So if you're familiar with us, great. If you're not, um, you know, it's going to be new uh, information for you. We are going to discuss the HERE program. And then we do have a Q&A session um, to answer you question, any questions about, you know, the help is here and the career source. And then uh, Jeanette's going to take over and we're going to talk about 10 steps for a career change and also talk about transferable skills. And then um, we're going to, um, at, you know, allow you again to answer, ask and, and answer some questions. We're going to do that uh, test um, that Denise has been talking about, and hopefully you guys get all the answers correct. Um, I don't know if the answers are tied to that gift card, but, um, you know, 
hey, I'm competitive. I love gift cards. I'm not in the running, but I hope you guys are at least able to get, you know, some really good answers and a gift card out of today's uh, presentation. So we're going to kick things off and start talking to you guys about Career Source Central Florida and uh, again, who we are and what we do. And again, some of you guys may be familiar with us, um, but let me introduce you to our services. Uh, we are career sourcers. We inspire people and transform businesses and elevate the community. Our mission at Career Source Central Florida is to connect Central Floridians careers and develop skilled talent for businesses. Our vision is to make Central Florida talent the best for the businesses. And here at Career Source Central Florida, we curate local talent for high demand industries, meeting local businesses needs and cultivating growth and prosperity for the Central Florida community. So that's, you know, whether it's through job placement, um, training and certification programs or higher education, we partner with Central Florida businesses, uh, colleges and universities to meet the industry needs and connect career seekers to local opportunities. And we definitely strive to maintain a purpose-driven company culture that values integrity, community, um, integrity, innovation, and fun. And our staff and community partners, they exemplify high standards of leadership and share a common vision for inspiring people, transforming businesses and elevating the Central Florida community. So um, just an overview about who we are and again, our vision and what we do at CareerSource Central Florida. Uh, where we serve, um, our footprint expands over five, five so we have locations throughout the Central Florida region with our headquarters in downtown Orlando. Uh, the counties that we serve are Lake, Seminole, Osceola, Sumter, and South. We have locations in Southeast Orlando and West Orange County. So the locations uh, that we serve are currently on the screen. We did uh, just relocate our West Orange location. Uh, they moved recently to the West Oaks Mall, and uh, that's just so we can better serve you. So these are the locations that we are uh, currently have on the green. So definitely, you know, um, you know, utilize that information and come in and see us. Now, right now, if you do determine that you want to utilize the services that we're going to go over, um, right now we are kind of doing things uh, in a split um, situation. Part of our, our, our individuals are offering services virtually and some of us are offering them, um, you know, in that face-to-face -face capacity. But if you do want to come into our centers, you do have to schedule an appointment. We definitely understand and um, how devastating losing a job can be and job loss is devastating no matter what the circumstances. But now due to COVID, um, we've, you know, added these new resources as a part of our efforts to provide uh, Central Floridians career services and access to support during this unprecedented time. So again, we are offering um, both virtual services as well as in-person in-person services, but all of our uh, in-person services do require an appointment. So we do want you to come see us, but we don't want you to come pull in the door. Um, again, no one is going to be admitted uh, without an appointment, and we definitely follow all of these social distancing um, and CDC guidelines in our centers, but we definitely want you to uh, come and visit us, but again, you want to schedule those appointments, and if you do come in, we do offer, uh, you know, the appointments for individuals to come in and utilize our computers. Um, some individuals may not have access to a computer, so they can come in and use that to file their initial um, reemployment claim or to certify their weeks. They can also come in um, to do, you uh, you know, employment related activities. But again, everything that we're doing in person at the centers is going to be uh, via appointment. So we definitely encourage you to schedule that appointment at our um, 800 number, which is 1-800-757-4598. Uh, and you can utilize our resources for virtual services, 7 uh, a.m. to 7 p.m. Our center hours are still the same uh, in person, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But um, that's how you can get in contact with us at Resource Central Florida. Next, we're going to talk about who we serve. So um, we serve both individuals as well as businesses. So we, we have uh, two sides of, you know, uh, people who we serve at CareerSource. So again, we serve 
both, um, you know, equally uh, services for the career seekers. Our niche market uh, does include individuals who are 35 years old or younger with a high school diploma or um, individuals with some college who earned less than $15 an hour, um, whose household income is about 35,000 or less. Now on the business, business side, our niche market, um, the businesses are between, you know, the size between five and 150 staff members um, and the businesses they represent the five counties uh, in our service area. And I do have to say that although this is our niche market of individuals that we serve, we do serve a variety of individuals and we do have special specialized programs to aid uh, individuals on their career journey. And um, some of the individuals that we serve have also served us and they're our military. So one of the specialized uh, services that we offer is to our veterans. So if you were to walk into a career source Central Florida location, uh, we would agree you with a good, um, but then we also ask, you know, how can we help you, but also have you served in the U.S. military? And the reason we ask that is, is for a couple reasons. One way is to um, acknowledge our service members and to say thank you for their service, and the other is to identify those individuals and direct them towards those specialized services that uh, are specifically for our veterans. So um, we have transitioned uh, many military veterans uh, directly into careers and helped them uh, through these specialized career uh, consultations. So we definitely make brightening our service members' future uh, our ultimate mission, and all of our veterans get priority of service uh, in, in our centers, and uh, veterans take precedence for receipt of employment, training, and placement services in career source Central Florida programs funded directly or indirectly, in whole or in part, by the Department of Labor. So those are, um, you know, just one of the specialized programs and that one specific to our veteran uh, population. So if you've served um, and you're looking for assistance, we recommend that you come in and let us know that you've served. We're going to ask you, but definitely let us know and we can direct towards uh, those resources. Another one of our specialized programs is going to be our Ticket to Work program. And at Career Source, we definitely understand that not everyone's journey looks the same. So we do have specialized programs that target certain demographics. Uh, the Ticket to Work program is an approved employment network with the Social Security Administration. Um, and that program is designed to help career seekers with disabilities explore their interests and pursue their passion and also to increase their income. So we do have that specific program for individuals with disabilities. And to participate in that particular program, uh, you can email us at ticket to work at careersourcecf.com. And that uh, email address is on the screen. Again, that's ticket to work at careersourcecf.com. So um, just to give you a feel for some of those specialized services, we do uh, have, you know, targeted programs. I'm going to go and give an overview of some of our, you know, just general services. Um, we definitely uh, recommend, you know, that you uh, go to our website, careersourcecentralflorida.com, uh, for more information on the services that we provide um, to explore, you know, your options, um, the other things that we offer to assist individuals with their employment needs. And just a few of those uh, resources is, you know, you can get assistance with a career uh, co uh, consultant. So you can meet with them one-on-one -on -one and uh, get your very own career uh, consultant, someone that can help you ignite your potential and help you identify, you know, what that next phase is going to look like. And that can um, be through employment support. Uh, the career coaching one-on-one, -on -one, uh, career placement. We can assist you by doing some career discovery assessments and also give you assistance with your resume. So if you have a resume, we can review it um, and get you started with building one um, specific to the, you know, the goals that you have in mind. Um, and Jeanette and I also invite you to uh, join us for our virtual workshops. So we do have a variety of offerings that we have on our virtual workshop. So if you're looking for some engaging and interactive experiences, um, you know, you don't necessarily even have to leave home uh, to do that. You can sign up for our virtual workshops on our website, careersourcecentralflorida.com. Again, we are hosting a series of virtual workshops. We do them several times per week. Um, and 
they're on topics you know that include you know what to include in your resume um, and how to write a resume. We do one on interviewing skills. We also do um, specific ones that help individuals identify on how to reinvent their career or how to navigate our database Employ Florida to locate those jobs and other resources that may be available through that particular website and many more offerings um, to again assist individuals with making that connection. So again, we do welcome you to join us on um, you know that this virtual platform you know, for uh, these workshops that Jeanette and I offer. And again, to get that information about what we offer and the dates you can and go to our website, careersourcecentralflorida.com to see the offerings. And we definitely look forward to, you know, seeing you uh, in one of our workshops in the future. Um, if you need additional information uh, in regards to training, uh, we definitely got you covered. Um, and we do have several programs that we're going to talk about in addition to help us here. Um, but uh, specifically, we're going to start off with the Skill Up um, resource. And that is uh, Skill Up Central Florida is a humanitarian effort. Um, and it provides skills, training, resources to job seekers and in employers um, during this COVID crisis. So um, this particular program, the Skill Up, it offers over 5,000 courses and it's a free resource to all residents in Central Florida. So job seekers can use this resource to explore career pathways. They can view local uh, job postings. They can register for free online learning and also receive workforce services. So um, also employers can use this particular resource. They can, um, you know, find qualified candidates. They can post jobs and re receive in-depth um, consulting to address their hiring and training needs. So again, this is a uh, another resource that can be available for you to uh, get the skills that you need or that you desire in order to, um, you know, advance in your career. Uh, we are definitely committed to training, um, you know, at Career Source Central Florida, we're committed to training our workforce. And one of the things that we do utilize to get individuals trained is the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Now, what that is, it's a federal program um, and it does offer, um, you know, an opportunity for individuals to improve their skills. Um, and it's through partnerships that we uh, we trained individuals. So we've established partnerships with uh, state colleges, regional technical schools, post-secondary uh, education, both public and private institutions. Um, and this is all to facilitate getting individuals uh, certified and getting um, them to obtain credentials. Um, because we definitely, you know, we want to make sure that our workforce is talented and they have the skills that they need in order to be successful. So. Um, we are, again, uh, training individuals through the Work Innovation Opportunity Act, or WIOA, or WIOA. It may be familiar to some of you guys, but again, that's an additional resource uh, for training, um, and it does allow us, uh, through that particular program, to train individuals also in high-growth industries. So we're going to take a look at some of those high-growth industries um, and what those uh, industries are. So again, we connect job seekers uh, to the industries that are growing. And these are industries such as healthcare, construction and utilities, uh, trade and transportation, and advanced information technology. So these are the occupations and the industries that are in demand uh, locally. Um, so uh, whether you're seeking a new career path or you're just starting out, Career Source Central Florida is again here to help you chart the success. And we, we go above and beyond the whole job placement side of it. We offer you guidance every step of the way. So again, that's from personalized career consultation to academic achievement. We are definitely dedicated to helping every career seeker find a career career that meets their individual needs and match their unique talents. So again, these are the, um, the high growth industries that we focus on. So if you are interested in training, these are going to be the areas that you'll be able to step into. Um, again, we want you to update those skills and we do have those partnerships, um, you know, with the local colleges um, to help individuals get into these high growth industries. And that's whether it's through uh, internships, we partner with organizations um, uh, for you know, internships, companies, um, and do we also partner with, you know, colleges, universities for those training and certification courses, and we can also assist you with um, job services. So next, we're going to kind of jump into the meat of uh, the presentation today, which um, we're going to talk about the particulars of the Help is Here program. 
So uh, what is Help Is Here? Um, Help Is Here uh, uh, is it's a program, basically, Orange County was given a grant that's going to enable uh, Career Source Central Florida to provide career counseling and training and internships and support services to individuals who have been impacted uh, by COVID-19. So they were awarded um, a $7 million uh, grant through the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security or CARES Act money. So they were awarded that, Orange County received that grant to assist over 4,000 dislocated workers from the county's hardest hit business sectors. Um, and those sectors are individuals who uh, worked in hospitality, uh, restaurants or in tourism and transportation and also retail. Um, they're looking to get, uh, you know, aid to those individuals. Um, and again, they were awarded a $7 million uh, grant to do that. So the goal is to uh, have at least 75% of these displaced workers. The goal is to have those individuals hired by June of 2021 and earning an average wage of $15 per hour with an, with an economic impact of $93.6 million dollars. So um, that's a huge impact to the Central Florida region. So again, um, the funding that we received was through the CARES Act funding, and we're going to get people trained. Those individuals that were dislocated, um, you know, due to COVID uh, in the, the hospitality industry, those industries were really hit hard. Um, you know, hospitality, the restaurant, tourism, and transportation, and retail. So we're going to um, utilize that fund, those funds, to get individuals trained and uh, back to work. Um, how can you benefit from uh, Help Is Here? Uh, Help Is Here provides access to free short-term training with um, some of our premier programs um, and providers, such as uh, Valencia College, um, uh, the University of Central Florida, and Orange Technical College and Seminole State College and more. So we've partnered with um, these institutions uh, to get these individuals um, into the short-term training. Uh, you can also um, utilize the Help Is Here through paid internships. You can earn while you learn. So uh, we've made that connection as well to get individuals into uh, internships. And uh, the third option is to get individuals back to work, get, to get them hired quickly. Um, and we can, can connect you to some of the businesses who are hiring right now. So there are a few ways that you can uh, utilize uh, the Help Is Here uh, um, funding. So um, uh, how do you qualify for the program, you ask? Um, so one of the ways for qualifying for this particular program is that you must be an Orange County resident. Um, and you also must be uh, legally able to work in the United States. And you also must be 18 years or older. Um, you must have had your employment impacted uh, directly by COVID-19 in one of the following ways. So it's listed on the screen. Um, you have either A, lost a job due to COVID-19. You're either laid off or um, furloughed. Uh, B, you have experienced significantly reduced hours due to COVID-19. Um, C, you, if you've had a business um, ordered shut down due to COVID. Uh, D, if you cannot obtain employment due to COVID, you have restrictions that way. And E, you've lived with someone who's been COVID in any of uh, the scenarios that we mentioned above. So um, again, these are the um, qualifiers uh, for COVID. So uh, I usually recommend, you know, that individuals, if they have it, a smartphone, snap a picture of it so that you kind of know the qualifications, you know, beyond this particular slide. So um, again, this is going to outline the qualifications uh, for uh, the COVID-19, uh, excuse me, the, the help is here funding uh, for COVID-19. So they do have requirements for that. And again, they're listed uh, for the qualifications. Now, as we know, with any programs, there are going to be some documentation that's going to be involved. So uh, the 
required documentation uh, required, you're going to need to provide proof of, um, of being of Orange County residents. So if you have a driver's license, um, you can provide a recent power or utility bill. Uh, if you have a lease, uh, apartment lease or uh, mortgage information, you can provide that or even a voter's registration card, um, anything to provide proof that you are an Orange County resident. You also need to provide proof of le your legal ability to work in the United States. And that can be uh, verified by providing a copy of your social security card or a green card, um, your W-2 um, with your social security number on it, um, or a U.S. birth certificate or uh, a receipt that says that you um, have, are in progress of getting a replacement for a lost or stolen social security card or U.S. birth certificate. Um, you can also utilize, you know, a passport or naturalization certificate and employment authorization. So um, you definitely need proof of your ability to work in the United States. But you also need proof uh, that you were impacted by COVID. Now, um, that may not be easy for a lot of people, but um, if you do have a layoff letter, that's definitely going to be useful. Um, a pay stub or payroll record from a business that laid off employees um, or a schedule. If you're, uh, you bring in your schedule to show that your hours were reduced, you can also provide a bank statement to validate that, you know, when you, you know, when you're working versus, you know, not, you know, working and, uh, you know, or no continue payroll deposits or or any proof of a pandemic. So, um, you know, those are going to be things that you need to provide to, you know, show proof of your, um, you know, of your documentation. So definitely um, be mindful of that. We do have to, you know, with any sort of programs, you know, uh, provide that sort of documentation. Now, um, a lot of individuals want to know whether or not they qualify. Some of these individuals are uh, self-employed or gig workers. So if you are self-employed or a gig worker, um, you know, the good news is that, yes, you can qualify uh, to receive uh, this particular funding through Help Is Here. So um, if you are a gig worker and self-employed and you've, you've experienced, you know, reduced hours or you've had an economic impact due to COVID, you can qualify. But you, again, you still need to provide documentation. Uh, and the documentation for gig workers, you need to demonstrate, um, you know, what they were doing uh, for income. So, and also demonstrate how that uh, income changed due to COVID. Um, again, for instance, you can provide a bank statement uh, identifying that. Um, for the individuals who are self-employed, um, you know, you need to provide, you know, proof that their business, you know, that they own their business, and also um, any sort of bank statements and tax returns or occupational licenses, and they show that, you know, they, um, you know, the proof of that particular information. So, um, again, self-employed individuals as well as gig workers can qualify qualify for uh, the Help Is Here program. So um, the next thing we're going to look at is what to expect after completing your application. So um, once you go online uh, to our website, careersourcecentralflorida.com, and click on that Help Is Here banner, um, you're and you fill out that application, you're going to be contacted by a career um, services consultant. They're going to contact you within three business days. So, um, and how they're going to reach out to you, they're going to reach out to you. Um, they're going to call you. They may even text you and they may also email you. So make sure when you're putting in that information, you're filling out that form that you have a good number um, that uh, you respond to because they're going to be reaching out. And one of the things that I do have to um, note and, and bring to your attention, some of these calls may come from an out-of-town number. So when we went virtual back in March, we were all issued, um, you know, cell phones. And these cell phones, because, uh, you know, they were issued, issued pretty quickly, they were... Um, a new area code that was associated with uh, some of the numbers. So it won't be coming from a, a standard uh, 407 area code. It may appear as an out-of-town number when they're calling you. Um, so definitely make sure, again, that you're answering your phone and that you put down a good number to receive um, those particular phone calls because, um, again, it may appear that these numbers are coming from an out-of-town uh, out number. Um, but they're going to ask you when they get a hold of you. They're going to ask you provide that proof of documentation uh, to verify, you know, any information and and um, they're also going to um, schedule an appointment with you to either, um, if you have the capabilities to upload that information and send it to them, you know, uh, 
mo uh, via your mobile phone or um, send it via uh, computer. Um, but you can also, um, they can arrange for you to drop it off at our locations by appointment. So, um, you know, that's something to, uh, you know, take into consideration um, that you're going to have to start looking for that documentation because you're going to need to provide that information pretty quickly upon, upon uh, submitting your application. So again, this consultant, they're going to schedule an appointment with you to discuss, you know, which option that you're going to um, go for with this particular uh, program. So again, you're going to apply for these resources um, at careersourcecentralflorida.com. And I see Jeanette has put in uh, to the chat that uh, these area codes, um, they're going to come, these the calls are going to come for that 689 area code. So again, be looking for that information and make sure that, you know, you're checking your emails, you're checking, you know, your phone and you're answering it because they will be calling you within uh, three business days from you completing your application. Next, we're going to talk about your options. So your options for this particular um, Help Us Here program, uh, your career con uh, services consultant, they're going to schedule that appointment with you. So you're going to sit down with you and discuss, you know, which direction that you want to go in. So the options are to get hired um, and, you know, you know, start working with a local employer um, as a paid intern, making $15 an hour uh, for eight weeks. So that's the option one. Uh, the second option is to uh, enroll in a short-term training program to learn new skills uh, for those careers that are in demand industries like we covered, uh, the healthcare, the advanced manufacturing, and more. So, um, you know, when you're talking to that career consultant, you want to, you know, start to have an idea of which direction that you want to go in. Um, and the third option, you definitely have the option to get placed uh, directly into full-time employment. So, um, you know, uh, again, you have three options. One is to do the internship option option, which is the $15 per hour for eight weeks, or to enroll into a short-term training program to learn new skills in one of our high-demand uh, industries. And the third option is to, again, to get directly placed um, into employment. And we do assist you um, with getting placed placement for um, those employment opportunities. So um, that concludes the first half of our presentation in relation to the uh, help us here. And I'm sure you guys have questions. So we're going to open things up uh, for questions now. Okay, let's take a look at the chat feature. I did see a, que a question here from uh, Beth. She wanted to know if we're making age exceptions due to COVID. Um, she's a little bit older than our niche customer, mm -hmm. and she just lost her career. Well, that niche market is just generally who we serve. That like, you know, the you know, it's, it's not anything specific to the help us here. We serve you know a variety of individuals from from, you know, all different types, you know, from individuals who are just starting out, you know, with work or who've never worked before to individuals who are looking for that, you know, uh, retirement job. So um, that particular age range for help is here is you just have to be 18 years or older uh, for that particular requirement. So that's the only age that you need to worry about. And um, if you're over 18, you're good to go as far as the help is here um, program. And for our, all of our other resources, you're open to, you know, all different age ranges. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, there was also a question by in the questions box that came in from Kelly Kelly. It says, what if you can't provide proof of documentation of any layoff or any bank statements to prove you have been affected by COVID-19? That's probably something that you're going to have to discuss with the individuals that are directly working that Help Is Here program. Um, I would imagine that they may have an option where they can contact the previous employer, perhaps, to verify um, employment and that it was affected by by COVID. But that's something you need to um, that you would want to go ahead and complete the application on our website so that you can get that call within three days, set up that appointment, speak to them and, you know, allow them to tell you, uh, you know, what could happen in that sort of a situation. I mean, I, I would think they may even have the option, like I said, of contacting the employer on your behalf to see, um, you know, just, just to get the information they need to be able to proceed with your application. 
Right. And definitely if you've applied for any sort of reemployment assistance or, you know, pandemic, you know, reemployment assistance, um, they're going to have record of that. So um, that's something that you can um, provide and, um, you know, you can get access through your account that way to show them that you um, were impacted um, by COVID. Okay. Do we have any other questions that came through in regards to the Help Us <clears throat> program? I don't see anything. Let me see. Uh, okay, there. it looks like Camera had some questions. Can you list all the specific training certification opportunities within Help is Here? Does a state unemployment document qualify as proof for having lost job to COVID? Yes, uh, that is something that they will... Um, consider, absolutely. Um, is social work a field for an eight-week paid internship and for direct placement into full-time work? So we don't, have, <laughs> right, we don't have a list, um, but we do um, recommend that you go to the website. Um, we did talk about the high demand, um, you know, industries that, you know, you're, you have to, you know, for the training to, to go into. So there are specific programs. It's not every program that an individual wants to go into. Uh, it does have to be an in-demand occupation, um, you know, and that's just because, you know, they, if you're going back to work, you know, those are the industries where they need people. They're in demand. So we're you're directing individuals to those specific programs. So we do recommend that you go to our website, uh, careersourcecentralforda.com, to see, you know, what, what those programs are and the offerings that we have and complete the, um, the application and get that appointment with the career consultant and you know, go into detail. They're going to be the ones that go into specific detail as to what the qualifications are and which programs are available. And they are, they are, you know, looking to enroll. They, you know, they have this money that they have to spend by a certain time frame. So they are looking forward to getting these calls and getting the individuals enrolled. So you want to start, you know, researching that. If you're looking to get into that program, uh, those short-term trainings, you might need to know what those programs are or what you're interested in. So definitely recommend, you know, doing some of the assessments if you're not quite sure. Um, so that you can make that transition go um, a little bit more smoothly. But um, definitely um, go to our website, careersourcecentralforda.com, to get those specific uh, questions um, answered. Uh, there was another question by Sean, Sean Derica. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Sean, Sean Derica. Um, she says, hello, I am a nail tech but has lost all of my clients due to COVID, what would I need to show proof? Proof of your, I mean, if you had a, a business, um, you know, proof of uh, your business, it could be um, bank statements, uh, you know, th those types of things. Uh, you know, you would be considered a, a gig worker if you were working on your own. I don't know if you were affiliated with any nail tech studios or what have you, but um, any anything that you have that can show uh, relation to payment that you were receiving for services as a nail tech. Uh, but again, that's going to, you know, you're really going to want to go forward with the application and then you're going to want to have that appointment set up with the help is here uh, representative and they will be able to, you know, kind of, you know, guide you through the weeds with that and, you know, seeing what is going to be acceptable, um, you know, if you don't have um you know, proof of a business or what have you. I know that bank statements is something that they will consider as well if it can be tied in, um, you know, for the services that you're providing as, as a nail tech. So uh, just like Kenya was saying, those types of specifics are going to require you to speak directly to the uh, Help Is Here representatives. Okay. I don't see anything else in the question and answers. And uh, let's see here. I don't see anything else in the chat at this time. 
Okay, so what we can do is uh, continue on. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about steps to a career change, uh, give you some important uh, strategies that you can try, uh, little suggestions here that are going to help to um, make the transition uh, a little bit smoother for you. Um, so we wanted to go ahead and provide you with that. We're going to put an we're going to we're going to spend a little bit of time or uh, emphasize the importance of transferable skills as well, because this is the time now where you're going to have to really think and assess what skills that you have that are going to be beneficial to an employer in another type of occupation or, or career. So, um, you know, when, when making a career change, uh, the skills are, are really what needs to be focused on, um, because you're going to have to identify those and show show a prospective employer how those skills are going to be beneficial uh, to that individual with limited work history and that sort of an occupation or a uh, career. So as we all know, you know, due to COVID-19 hitting uh, the hospitality and other similar industries the hardest, many individuals, unfortunately, are being forced to have to make a career change. Um, you know, it can be exciting to think of the possibilities, but when you have to make this type of decision, it can be intimidating um, and it does require a lot of conviction on your part. So whether or not you're seeking to find something more meaningful, uh, something less stressful or something with greater opportunities, you're going to be hopeful that everything is going to fall into place. So what we want to do first is just provide you uh, with some useful strategies that you can consider when thinking of a new occupation or career change. Um, but first, we're going to give you uh, just a little bit of statistics on career changes. So with the next slide here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you're not alone. <laughs> Research has shown that the average worker switches jobs anywhere between 10 to 15 times over the course of a career. Now, there are many reasons on why a person may decide to change jobs or careers through the course of their life. On the next slide, we're going to review the top five reasons that people change careers. Now, uh, again, there, there's many reasons on why people could consider career changing. Uh, there was a survey that was done not too long ago from Job, Lift, Job Lists Midlife Career Crisis Survey. They reported on the top five reasons that people change careers. And you see those um, on the screen. 47% change careers for better pay. 39% indicated that their current position was just too stressful. 37% changed careers because they wanted a better work-life balance. 25% didn't feel challenged in the, in the current uh, industry or occupation that they were in, and they were looking for a new challenge. Similar to, to myself, after 14 years of reemployment assistance, uh, still with the Department of Economic Opportunity, I decided to go into a whole new uh, aspect of the department and I went into workforce development. So I went into the opposite of, of where I was at with reemployment assistance, but many, 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 many of the hard skills and the transferable skills that I had acquired in my job as a uh, reemployment assistant specialist were easily transfer, transferred and are often still used in the career development side of things. So it may not necessarily be that you have to get into a new industry per se, but you could stay within the types of occupations that you're used to having, but just getting creative in thinking what other occupations in this type of industry could use the transferable skills that I've acquired. Um, and then 25%, or I'm sorry, 23% just 
they weren't passionate about the field that they were in any longer. So those are the top five reasons that people primarily look to change jobs. Now, unfortunately, I know most of you that are on this call are having to consider this because of COVID coming out of nowhere and um, you know affecting uh, people in the, those hardest hit sectors such as hospitality, the restaurant industry, the transportation industry, um, et cetera. So, um, you know, I know for a lot of you, it may not have been something that you were even thinking of, but um, it, you definitely have a lot of skills that you have acquired that are very useful to employers in another occupation or industry. So I don't want you to feel, um, you know, that, that, that it's not possible because it is very possible and it happens all the time. So we want to um, give you guys uh, just a few tips on how you can do that. Um, but first, uh, we're gonna look quickly at some benefits of a career change. Sometimes when things happen, we don't know why they happen, um, you know, but hopefully we can always find a silver lining in, 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 uh, during difficult times, um, you know, but the, this is from the same survey, jobless survey. Um, they reported that most people uh, were happier after they made the change. 77% of the people surveyed stated that they were happier after making a switch. 75% of the people surveyed said that they were more satisfied in a new position. 69% of individuals felt more fulfilled and 65% experienced less stress in their new occupation or career field. In addition, the people who changed careers were making more money. Survey respondents who changed careers for better pay earned an additional $10,800 annually compared to their previous positions. So, um, you know, you don't want to, 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 to lose hope. Uh, career Source is here to help you and to help guide and navigate you uh, through the career change. Uh, again, we've got uh, fantastic resources where we can assist you with getting short-term training, whether it's through Help Is Here, whether it's through the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, uh, you know, we can help pay for that training. Um, we can help get you placed into jobs as well. And internships, on-the-job training, we have many, many resources uh, where we are going to be able to help guide you in transitioning into a new occupation or career field. Now we're going to look at just a few tips, 10, um, that you may want to consider um, if, you if you're still kind of on the fence and not knowing what direction you want to go in as far as seeking out a new occupation or career. Uh, the first one is going to be to evaluate your current job satisfaction. For some of you that may still be employer attached or for those that are no longer employer attached, um, you really want to think about um, some of the reactions uh, to, the, to some of the job situations that you're either currently experiencing or um, were experiencing in your last position. You know, you could keep a journal and just kind of jot down some ideas in some of the reactions that you have had. Which aspects of your current or most recent job did you like or dislike? You know, are your dissatisfactions related to the type of work that you're doing? Or was it the type of company culture that you were working at? Or was it the people with whom you worked? Um, you know, while you're doing this, there are some things that you can do right now that are going to help you to prepare to move on when it's time for change. So you can ask, start by asking yourself some of these important questions that are on the next slide here. You know, it's too easy to blow through life on autopilot like we often do. Um, but, you know, sometimes we don't really spend time honestly exploring what we really want in a career. Um, you know, it, it's not necessarily that people are going to succeed just by migrating to a particular industry or job. Uh, you know, people thrive by exploring their strengths, their motivations, their likes, and their dislikes. 
So, you know, to ensure that you forge ahead, based on a thoughtful appraisal rather than just blindly picking something or listening to others, you know, when they say you should be doing this, you should employ an honest self-evaluation. You want to ask yourself questions such as, what would I rather be investing my time and energy in? What is my personal mission? What are my top three values? You know, what pivotal experiences have I endured that make me who I am today? You know, what obstacles stand in the way of making me or, or, or of me making a career change? What strengths can I draw during my transition? You know, so these are all things that you want to think about before you just, you know, take the plunge and maybe get yourself into an occupation or industry that that you haven't really thought of. And then once you're in, you don't like it. And, you know, you want to not be in a vicious cycle of, of you know, having to look for work and, and applying for jobs that may not really suit you or fit or, or fit into your, your lifestyle. So Career Source can help you with that um, in making those employment plans. Now, um, you know, it's important uh, before you decide, like I said, if you're on the fence with, you know, what your next move is going to be. Um, one thing that's going to help you is to assess your interests, your values, and your skills. Again, that's the most important part is to identify your strengths and your skills and how those things can um, lead to choosing the right career, the, ne the, the next right career, I should say. Now, on the next slide here, um, you want to make sure that you review, you know, past successful roles. You could look at any type of volunteer work that you've done, projects and jobs that you've had to identify, you know, when were you happiest? What were those preferred activities and skills that you were demonstrating? Uh, you know, determine whether your core values and skills are addressed through your current or your most recent career, um, you know, what do you really like doing when you're at work, when you're at home, in your spare time? What excites you? What energizes you? What's your passion? You know, if you're unsure and you need help in finding those answers, you should consider taking one or more uh, career assessments. The key is to spend some time rediscovering yourself and use your self-assessments to direct you in your new career search. Now, there are some free online tools that you can use to help assess career alternatives. On this slide here are some of the more popular ones that you're going to find online. Uh, these, all of these tests are available for free online and, P and can be a good start to identifying your next career. So you could take a picture of this screen if you would like. Um, you just type into Google, it will take you to the website. Um, but some of the some of the ones that we often use for our customers that come into our facilities are uh, these five that you see listed here on the screen. Uh, there's one, the first one is called the Career One-Stop Interest Assessment. Uh, basically what you do here is you answer a 30 quick questions uh, online and that produces then a list of careers that might be a good fit for your interests that you have identified in answering those 30 quick questions. There's also what's called the ONET Interest Profiler. ONET, if you just type in O-NET into Google, it takes you to onetonline.org. This is the online database for occupations. Anything and everything that you want to know about any occupation, you are going to find on onetonline.org. Fantastic resource. I use this resource a lot when I'm assisting people in creating resumes. Um, this gives you a dissected, in-depth look at the at, at any occupation, um, what skills you're going to need, uh, what the tasks are, um, you know, that sort of thing. So this is a good resource to go to. And on that website, they have um, 
an assessment called My Next Move Interest Profiler. This is actually administered by the United States Department of Labor. Uh, users take a 60 question interest inventory, and then that yields a profile of interest tendencies, including six areas, realistic, investigative, social, enterprising, conventional and artistic. So I would encourage you, my next move, it's just a really, really great uh, tool. There's also a tool called, called Path Source. This is a free career exploration uh, solution that helps not only students, but job seekers make better career choices. They do have a free mobile app as well. Um, Users can produce lists of potential careers based on personality characteristics and an interest profiler. Um, then there's also the Skills Matcher, which is uh, sponsored by the Department of Labor. Um, this is a resource to enable users to assess the skills that they want to incorporate into their careers. So it will rank you or rate you on basic skills such as reading, writing, speaking, scientific reasoning, and critical thinking. So another good um, assessment in order to draw out some of those key skills that employers are looking for. Career Explorer, the final one, this is also a free platform for users to assess their interests, personality types, abilities, career values, and preferred work and social environments in order to find matches that will lead to satisfying careers. So, you know, if, if you're wondering what's what could possibly be out there for you uh, when you're trying to decide in, you know, what the next direction is that you want to go in, I would definitely encourage each of you to, um, go online and at least take one or two of these assessments. And, you know, I, I'm sure you would be very curious to see um, what types of um, occupations and careers may come up based off of how you answer the questions in these assessments. So just a good guide, uh, a good place to start. Um, so again, um, if you want, take a picture of that or just um, if you've written them down, just Google them and you'll be able to get to those websites. Now on the next slide, we're gonna look at identifying transferable skills. This again is key in making a career transition um, because when you're applying to jobs, you know, you, you're, they're, go you're, they're going to be getting resumes that, you know, are, are, are gonna frankly have work histories that are may not be uh, similar to the types of jobs that you are applying to. So that's gonna be where you're gonna have to convince an individual um, in the resume, on your application, how, you know, although you're breaking into this new field or this new occupation that you still possess valuable skills that are going to, um, make an impact if you're selected for the position. So transferable skills are skills that are also known as portable skills, which are qualities that can be transferred from one job to another. They are any skills that you possess that are useful to employers across various jobs and industries. Transferable skills can be used to position your past experience when you are applying for a new job, especially if it is in a different industry. So you wanna take time to consider which skills that you currently possess that can be transferred to a new employer and you want to be sure that you're including these types of skills on your resume. So in just looking at the screen here, um, you know, there are four categories. There are categories of leadership, teamwork, problem solving, and communication. And the things that you see listed under each of those categories are, are, are the types of skills that any employer in any industry is looking for. Doesn't matter if you're if you're out at a construction site or if you're in an office or if you're you know in a restaurant. You have to have good decision making skills. Uh, you have to have good communication. You have to have high work ethics and accountability. You have to be able to um, manage conflict. Under teamwork, you have to be able to collaborate 
You have to have good problem solving skills, networking, team building, uh, flexibility and the ability to adapt to situations as they change, uh, problem solving, again, attention to detail, critical thinking, um, you know, brainstorming, decision making, prioritizing, under communication, active listening, uh, public speaking, perhaps, presentations, confidence, clarity. You know, these are all uh, skills that are transferable, again, into any type of industry, into any type of occupation. So these are the types of skills that you're really going to want to lock in on when you are considering um, making a career move into a different occupation or industry. These are the things that you're going to have to play up um, on your resume in your application, when you're uh, in your interviews and speaking about your past skills and um, how they're going to make an impact with a new employer. On the next slide, um, it talks a little bit more about skills and it defines basically the two uh, main types of skills. You've got hard skills and you've got soft skills. Hard skills are, are the technical skills, the technical knowledge. It's the type of skills that you acquire um, and perfect through hands-on experience. Hard skills are the types of uh, things that you go to school to learn, like you learn how to become a welder, uh, you learn how to drive a 18-wheeler, you learn how to operate certain types of software. Um, these are all considered hard skills, which are, again, important uh, for you to identify uh, which of your skills, especially, you know, technical proficiencies, which are, are definitely definitely sought after in most industries and occupations. Um, but the, the hard skills, again, are the more technical skill aspects of your job. Your soft skills is where a lot of the transferable skills are going to come in. Soft skills are the personal habits and traits that shape how you work on your own and with others. Soft skills are linked more to individual's character and, they, and they're not easily um, taught in a lot of cases. You know, you hear sometimes people, oh, she's got such great people skills, you know. Um, the soft skills really is what it is. It's interpersonal skills, it's high, high emotional intelligence. Um, and these are most of the transferable skills that you have fall under the soft skill category. So um, again, when you're transitioning, it's, it's vitally important that you identify your strongest competencies and skills and make sure that those are the things that you are um, able to show a prospective employer, um, you know, what you're going to be bringing to the table by way of these transferable skills. Number three, when, or when trying out a, a new career field, again, perhaps, perhaps it's not a completely new type of job. I mean, you know, this here are two examples, uh, someone that may have been affected in hospitality that was working front desk staff, you know, the types of skills that a front, de a front desk agent at a hotel would have uh, could be very useful um, in a sales type of position or an e executive assistant, a personal assistant. Uh, I know sometimes people, um, you know, they, they may uh, sign up to do substitute teaching um, if they've got some of the credentials in their background, you know, before, We've, I see that plenty of times with some of our customers that come in while they're looking for full-time employment. They may, um, you know, do some substitute teaching, um, it, project managing. The same thing with retail workers. Uh, if you work in retail, there's a lot of skills that you can use in, in junior management, perhaps, or um, in an entry-level accounting position, tutoring, delivery driver. I mean, there's a lot of different... Um, you know, not necessarily that you have to branch out into something completely brand new or into a completely new industry. You can still kind of stay with um, in that industry, but just, you know, a different occupation. 
So, um, you know, the, these are just two examples um, from zeti.com. But um, again, those are the things that you want to really start thinking about is, is the skills and the other types of jobs that could be within that industry where you're going to be able to transfer some of that to, to a new position. Um, number four, um, check out job opportunities uh, or job options. Uh, good ways to do that is to um, compare different fields. Uh, you can compare different industries. Uh, again, onet.com org is a fantastic uh, onetonline.org I apologize is a great resource for that um, employ Florida also has a labor market uh, statistics uh, where you can uh, explore some of the careers whether it be in Orange County Seminole County uh, you know what are the demands for certain types of positions, what are the salary expectations? Uh, what is, uh, you know, what is the competition? How many jobs are uh, usually avail available on an annual basis? Um, how many people are currently online registered looking for these types of jobs? Um, there's a very good section uh, for labor market information on Employ Florida. Dot com, and that is the official job search engine for the state of Florida. And it's also what we use um, to track services that we provide to individuals that um, come into our facilities and request our assistance. So if you've never been on employflorida.com, I would encourage everyone to check out that website as well. But when you're checking out job options, uh, again, you want to compare and contrast different job fields, uh, research industries of interest to you, uh, maybe identify a few target occupations that will value from your skill set, um, and then evaluate your findings. Uh, you may also want to get personal by connecting with your network for advice and feedback on certain careers that you may be contemplating. Um, you know, get personal through your network. Uh, on the next screen here, uh, one of the real keys to successfully changing careers is going to be your networking abilities. People in your network may be able to give you job leads, offer you advice and information about a particular company or industry, or they can introduce you to other people so that you can expand your network. Even if you don't think you have a network, you probably do, whether it's current colleagues, former colleagues, friends, and family members. You can also broaden your network through joining professional organizations, creating creating an account on LinkedIn. Um, you know, there's over 600 million users on LinkedIn. Um, this is a fantastic uh, resource for connecting, for learning about different businesses. Um, you know, th th there's so much on LinkedIn um, as it pertains to, you know, it, it is. It's an the, the, the Facebook of occupation, I guess, <laughs> you know, it, it, it pretty much is the, the best tool for connecting with other workforce professionals. So if you've never um, set up an account in LinkedIn, I would encourage you to do so. It's very easy. Um, just takes a few minutes to sign in uh, or sign up and you can create your own LinkedIn profile. And again, that will help you uh, connect uh, with other uh, professionals uh, when you are, especially when you're looking for work, it's very, very useful and beneficial. The next uh, uh, strategy tip is, you know, if you have, if, once you do lock in on another career or occupation that um, is of interest to you, uh, see if you're able to job shadow. If you've got somebody that's in that industry, uh, you know, someone that can maybe get your foot in the door just to kind of spend a day with them uh, to see what it's like being in that job. Um, you know, this may help uh, in determining, uh, you know, because changing careers is a major life decision. And sometimes it can get overwhelming at times. So if you're able to maybe find a mentor who can help you through through this, it will be that much easier. Um, you know, you can also gain access to that individual's network as well. Um, 
you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, someone that's on top of the chain there in, in the business. Um, but, you know, just anyone where you can maybe job shadow uh, a day or so just to kind of, you know, get the feel for what it would be like working in that sort of occupation. If the, if the opportunity presents itself on the next slide, you could also try out the position. Um, you know, you need to remember that in a sense, you are starting your career again from square one. Uh, you know, if, if an opportunity presents itself, if you're able to, part you can try the job out part time. Um, if you're able to um, maybe, you know, try out this type of occupation through a volunteering type of um, opportunity, you know, maybe take advantage of that as well. Um, the, you know, it may give you the needed experience that you need uh, to kind of try out what that new career would be like before you go all in. Um, you may also want to consider temping in your new field. I know a lot of times when people are um, in between jobs, they tend to sign up with various staffing agencies. Um, you know, they can pick up temporary assignments, um, which can also give you um, exposure to uh, a new type of occupation or career that you may be interested in going to. Now on the next slide, you may you can also consider uh you know taking a class or two investigate educational opportunities that can help bridge your background uh to a new field uh you know maybe you find out that it's necessary that you update your skills uh to broaden your knowledge um you know we have resources for that. Um, you know, Kenya did go over the metrics online learning. That is a fabulous resource for upskilling. You learn at your own pace. You have a six month unlimited access to over 5,000 courses and assessments. I use it myself. It's a fantastic resource. Um, there are also certification tracks, over 135 industry recognized certifications. I'm in the process someday of hopefully becoming Microsoft Office certified. Uh, it's about 143 modules, but it, it covers the entire Microsoft um, uh, office suite um, and I like that it's you know it's broken up into beginner intermediate and advanced levels some of the modules are as short as eight minutes up to an hour hour and a half you get pre-test post-test to see how you're retaining the information and uh, this type of online learning is also um, looks good on a resume um, you know that you're taking the initiative uh, you know, it's professional development. And these are the types of things that you can also include on your resume uh, whenever you are looking for employment. So I would encourage everyone um, to check out the, the Skill Up Metrics Online Learning at our website and, um, you know, take advantage of it. It's, it really is, it's a terrific resource. Um, on the next slide here, um, again, we're talking a little bit about upgrading your skills. So that kind of goes hand in hand with what I was just uh, saying here. Uh, we also have um, online workshops, as Kenya had mentioned. Uh, we have a gamut of different um, topics. Uh, that we uh, do our workshops. Our workshops are usually held on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, you can go to our website again for more information on that. Um, but you definitely want to always be looking for ways to develop new skills uh, because, again, that can help pave the way for change. Um, this is going to help you leverage uh, your candidacy for new positions. Um, you know, so, you know, Metrics Online Learning, again, is another fantastic resource. Um, if it's something more formal that you're looking for, uh, perhaps it's short-term training through the Help Is Here program, or it could be a, you know, a longer training period through our Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, which is the federal, federally funded program. Uh, when we hear you know, politicians talking about training uh, you know, the workforce for high growth industries, that's 
what it is basically. It's, it's money that's provided by the federal government uh, to put people into uh, training opportunities. Um, and that's where you're gonna come out certified uh, in something. Uh, you know, we have everything from healthcare to uh, uh, computer and information technology courses, transportation and logistics, um, construction type work, all the high growth industries. I believe on our website, um, careersourcecentralflorida.com, under our, our, our training section, there is a training matrix that contains over 251 courses. I believe it's 251 or 254 that we are currently um, sponsoring. Um, and these are with uh, educational institutes in the area. You know, most of them are Seminole State, Valencia, uh, Lake and Sumter County, Orange Tech, and a few of the other Votech schools in the area. So I would also encourage you to take a look at that as well. And then finally, um, you know, we hope that everyone will uh, contact us through careersourcecentralflorida.com sometime in the next few days, whether it be to, um, you know, uh, see about the help is here, uh, perhaps applying for that, or just to make a career appointment. All of the pages on our website um, have this button where it says request your career appointment. Once you click on that, you're going to get a screen that will pop up. It's going to ask you to enter your contact information. It'll then list a, a few areas of interest uh, that, uh, you know, as to what, what type of assistance you're looking for. And then you submit that and then a representative will be in contact with you within a day or two to set up an appointment. And these appointments can be done by telephone, they can be done virtually, or they can be done in person if you wanted to come into the facility. But again, it's got to be by appointment only um, until further notice. Um, and then during this appointment, you will be able to, uh, you know, have the opportunity of that career service consultant and they'll be able to go into our services in much greater detail at that time. So with that, that concludes the second half of the presentation. Um, so we'd like to go ahead and open it up now if anyone that has any questions or comments about anything regarding our resources or making a career transition. Kenya? Okay, let me take a look at the chat. I didn't see anything that came in um, through the chat. I'm gonna check the Q&A feature. Um, uh, 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 Mara asks, can you apply for both the Workforce Asian and Opportunity Program and the Help Is Here program? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And she also asks, are you or are you limited to just receiving one uh, if you qualify? So answering both of those questions, you can apply for multiple. Well, the help, uh, the help is here. I mean, you know, we are very much, tar both are available, absolutely. But, um, you know, if you're get, you would get the training regardless. I mean, you know, well, actually what I would, what I would say is that, you know, when you speak to, you know, go ahead and, and do the application if you, if you're an Orange County resident for the help is here. And then when you're meeting with that uh, help is here representative and you're talking about your background, you're talking about, um, you know, the skills that you have, um, what you're thinking about branching into or, or, or switching into, they're going to make the best decision for you on whether or not that would be an internship through help is here, whether or not what you're trying to do may require more training. And that's where the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act may be able to come in and, and assist with that. So it's really going to be up to you speaking to that career service consultant um, and them there, there's some documents that they'll complete with you. One of them is a universal assessment form. They're going to make sure that you're registered in Employ Florida, which is you got to be in order to get any of our services. You have to have an account in Employ Florida, period, before anything can move forward. And then um, at that time, you know, the different options will be discussed and they will make that determination on uh, which program can best meet 
your needs and desires. Um, but absolutely, both are on the table. Mm -hmm. And I see that, Kenya, thank you for putting the Employ Florida and ONET online websites in the chat. Okay, uh, any other questions? at this time or comments? Uh, no more in the uh, Q&A. Yeah, I'm looking to see if there's anything in the chat. I don't see anything um, in the chat at this time or in the Q&A. Um, someone did ask about the recording of this particular presentation. I'm going to leave that for Denise to um, answer um, in regards to uh, you know, the, receiving the recording of the presentation. Uh, Kelly asks, is there any extra training for anyone who's served safe certified? So again, Kelly, you're going to have to, um, you know, go to the website and take a look at, you know, what's in demand, um, you know, and what's being offered uh, specifically, you know, for any of the occupations that you may be interested in. So there's going to be a little bit of research um, that's going to be necessary on your part. But again, um, you know, go to the website, Career Source Central Florida. Uh, dot com and you can get information about you know the training that's available um, right right uh, uh, whenever you go to the website career source central florida dot com you're going to see a career seekers tab it says career seekers mm -hmm. and underneath that tab is going to be training when you click on that you're going to see the uh you'll see the training matrix and it, i believe <clears throat> I believe last time I looked, it was either 251 or 254 different things uh, listed. And then that training matrix will show you what educational institute would be providing the training. It'll tell you what industry it's in. It will tell you the name of the program. It will tell you how much it costs, how much is covered. I know for many of them, we cover the entire amount or very well close to it. Um, so, you know, you, you, need, you would have to go online and identify some things that are on our list. And then I would advise you to see what school it's being offered at and then go to their website and take a look at what that type of program looks like at that school. Make sure it's a school that you can get into. Um, make sure that you, you, you know, you, you can look at the curriculum and, and see what's involved and make sure that that's something that that's going to um, be doable for you at whatever stage you're at, you know, in your life or whatever domestic type of uh, responsibilities you have going on, because it would be, it's like a full-time job. It's, it's training. You are, you are training and you are learning. It's short-term, it's full-time, um, and, and, and it's going to, you know, be, well, right now with COVID, they may be splitting it up, but prior to COVID, it was in person, most of it. Mm -hmm. So um, fantastic opportunity. We have a lot of people that come through our Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act program. I mean, and they just go on. It's a great launching pad to start a permanent career.